Hey, future badass business owner, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. Today, I want to go over 13 questions that I really think you need to ask yourself prior to starting your new small business. Now, before you jump into creating a small business of any kind, it's important that you step back and ask yourself a few questions to make sure that this is going to be the right choice for you. And depending upon your background, you may have little to no experience in business, so you might not think about some of these things. Now, I come from a background of 25 years in big box retailing before I made my leap to small business owner. And I can tell you that going from thousands of customers today to only a few was a big adjustment. But the good news is, whether you have a big business business, a small business, they basically have the same concepts going on. However, the life of a small business owner is very unique. So I want to make sure that you know you have what it takes to make it work. So let's go through these 13 questions and just see how you answer them. Some are really simple, uh, but they're just important things for you need to ask. The first one is something like, do you even like people? Yeah, I know this sounds like a silly question, but it is very important because let's face it, some of you don't like working with the public. And for most of you, if you do not enjoy working with the public, then you need to stop here. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You do not need to be a small business owner because the reality is no matter what your new small business is, you're going to be dealing with other people and you're going to be dealing with the public constantly. There just is no way to get around having to deal with people. Now, I'm not saying you need to love people and that you need to love your customers, but at minimum, you need to love solving problems and realizing that things are going to go wrong and you're going to help take care of these people even when they get upset. So do you like people? Number two, do you have thick skin? Listen, you're going to need it because people are going to get upset. And many times when they're upset, there is a good reason behind why they're upset. Now, I'm not saying it wasn't a mistake or an accident that caused them to be upset, but they're going to get upset. And for some people, they're just wired that way. They're just moaning and groaning because that's what they do. Now, your goal is to minimize the amount of yelling or how long they remain upset. You know, a wise person once told me early in my customer service career that to remember that people most of the time are upset about what happened at the problem. The key is to not take it personally, that you need to resolve their issue. And if you remain calm, they will stay calm. Even when they escalate it, the more calm you stay, the more calm they're going to get as well. And by the way, that thick skin is not just for customers. You're going to have some critics. You're going to have critics that are even in your own family and friends. And it's important that you understand that you're going to have to be able to take all of the criticism that's coming your way. And when you make mistakes, you're going to have to make sure that you can take those mistakes, turn them around and learn from them. You need to learn to be a duck and let it roll off your back and just keep moving forward. All right, question number three, do you embrace and believe in great customer service? I cannot stress this one enough on how critical this is going to be to the success of your new business. You need to keep in mind that you are in a service business no matter what type of business that you have. Because whether you provide products or services without customers, you will have no business. You need to take care of those customers. You need to take care of your vendors and your employees if you're going to have a profitable business for life. Now, this question is different than the first question. You may not be a people person, but you can still be great at customer service. I know a lot of people that are this way. You just have to believe in giving and getting the best customer service. And if you enjoy great customer service, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Question number four, are you willing to put in the time to do the research on your new business? If you think you can just jump right in with both feet and not hit the bottom of the pool, then you are being naive. You have a lot of homework to do before you even spend one penny on the business. Can you jump in with both feet? Absolutely. Will you get knocked around? Will it cost you money? Will it cost you time? Absolutely. Listen, you need to spend time with your best friend Google and start researching your new business. What are the startup costs? What does your typical customer look like? What are their needs and how can you help fill them? How much money can you make even doing the business? Is this business trending up or is it trending down? Does your community even need someone like you? And what's going to be your special sauce to help you stand out from those competitors? These are just a few of the questions you need to be asking yourself. Now, the good news is we're going to have a couple of episodes coming up here on 
doing your research when it comes to your competition and in running the business in general. It is one of the most critical pieces that you can do because there are a lot of business owners that have been in business for a few years and they are still trying to figure it out. And if they would have known certain things in the beginning, they could have saved themselves a lot of time and money. And if you don't believe me, just go ask anybody when they say, what do you wish you knew when you first started? And a lot of times they could have discovered it in their research. Uh, Don't worry, we're going to have a little uh, cheat sheet for you as well. And I believe there's something in the startup guide that will help guide you on that as well. All right, question number five, how well do you know your trade area? Now, this is part of question four that you're going to dive into when it comes to your uh, research, but it's important that you narrow down and know what your ideal trade area is. If you're having a physical location. Most physical locations are only going to pull about five to 10 miles where people will actually drive to it. Uh, So it's really important you understand what's around you in that general area. I'm also a big fan of what I call the five mile rule. Even if you have a service-based business, listen, you'll spend a lot of time, gas, energy. If you go out 20 miles, 25 miles uh, outside of your normal place, and you need to make sure that for whatever business you have, there is plenty of business right around where you are going to be opening the business. Remember, this is a profit game, not a sales game. So yes, you can get a lot of sales when you drive really far. But if you're burning all that up in gas and money and time and lost jobs, then it's not worth it for you. So you need to make sure that, you know, if you're going to open up a garage door business, that you don't open it up in a neighborhood that's full of carports that just don't have those garages. So it's really important that you do and understand your trade area. Question number six, do you have a plan for living expenses while you get your business off the ground? This is an important one, and there's actually a part two coming up here in a minute. But I don't know about you, but I like paying my bills and putting food on the table. So I'm going to assume that you do too. You need to have a plan of how you're going to feed your family while you get this business up and running. I know you have dreams of profits coming out the yin yang when you open up your business, but it doesn't always work that way. So you need to make sure that you have at least six months of living expenses built up. So this way you can go ahead and survive during this time. And if you think you're going to be profitable, you need to make sure that you double whatever number you have, because I'm telling you, it's going to cost you a lot more and it's going to take longer than what you think. And if, and if I'm wrong, fantastic. You're one of the very few because very few people can come out the shoot making enough profit to be able to survive. They, they definitely need some money that is saved up so that they can get through those rough patches as they get the business going. Way too many small businesses disappear when all of a sudden the owner wakes up and realizes they can't keep doing this because they got to feed the family. So they give up and they go back to a regular job thinking they're going to do this part time again. And pretty soon they stop doing the part time piece and eventually the business is gone altogether. Um, You know, so it's better for you to do it the other way. It's better for you to have a job, start your new business part time, build up that savings and then make the leap. So please make sure that you look at your finances and make sure that you can survive for the first six months while you build that business. Uh, Question number seven, are you a self-starter? Let me tell you, when you work for other people, a lot of times you come in and you already have an agenda of what you have to get accomplished, in which cases you know you need to do A, B, and C because it's just habit. It's something that you do every day in the business. But when you have your own business, it doesn't quite work that way. And if you do not have the focus that's necessary, you're going to find yourself working on things that you don't need to. You might be off playing, doing things, going to the movies, playing video games, thinking you got plenty of time while you wait for business. Now, self-starters, even when you have no business, you need to be working on your business and you need to be diving in and finding ways that you're going to generate new customers. And if you're not a self-starter, I'm telling you, that's going to be very difficult because a lot of times, yeah, in our head, it sounds really good. We're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But if you're not a self-starter, then you're going to need to put some things in place to poke you and prod you because it's you're going to have to do a lot of that. And if you're not a self-starter, you're not going to be able to do that. So you might need some people in your life that are going to help you do that very thing uh, because you need to understand the difference between working in the business and working on the business because way too many people are only good when they're able to work in the business and they don't have the first clue what to do when they should be working on the business. And the money is made from the business owner is on the profits from the business because you get paid two different ways inside your business. And we're going to talk about this in future episodes. One is as the employee in the business. And then there's the business owner who gets paid based off of the profits of the business. I just want you to keep in mind that dreaded time management will come into play. And if you're not a big fan of calendars and lists, well, you're going to need to start getting used to time blocking and knowing how to use your time effectively. 
All right, question number eight, do you get distracted easily? Listen, I think most entrepreneurs love shiny things. Oh, look, kitty. We love ideas and we love coming up with new ways to do stuff, but let's face it, we get distracted easily. A great idea pops into our head and we are off to the races. If you know this about yourself, then you will need to recognize when you are doing it so that you can get back on track. You need to have friends, mentors, etc., that can help you stay focused. You will need to have a plan every single morning that you will need to accomplish. Now you can have a focus problem. The key is that you need to recognize it when you're doing it and you need to be able to react to it. Ooh, a squirrel. Question number nine, do you have enough funds to keep your business up and running? Now this one's different than question number six because question number six was about your personal finances. What I'm talking about here is having the finances to support the business because you cannot dip into your personal funds in order to pay the business. You can't use the family food money to buy the supplies that you need. The kids need to eat after all. (laughs) Listen, do you need equipment? Do you need some marketing funds? Do you need anything special to keep the new business going? As part of your research on your new business, you need to make sure that you understand what your monthly out-of-pocket costs are going to be for your first six months and make sure that you have enough funds that you keep in the business in order to keep the business going. Once again, this is why you need those funds for you personally, because you're going to continually reinvest back in the business until you can get to a point where the business is self-sustaining and you can build an emergency fund in the business. Very few businesses come out the chute making a profit from day one. So you need to figure out during the planning stages of getting your business up and running how much money you're going to need. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the concept of bootstrapping later in the podcast series. Just know that bootstrapping is where you reinvest the business's profits to be able to grow the business. All right, question number 10, are you prepared to work a lot of hours initially? Whether you start your new business part-time or full-time, you're going to work a lot of hours to get this business off of the ground. Even if you're working a job, think about it, you're going to have 40 hours, 35, 40 hours at the full-time job, and then you're going to be working on this business part-time. So you're still working 60 to 80 hours. Same thing as if you're doing it full-time, trust me, you're going to be working a lot of hours to be able to get all the sales that you need to get. So once again, you're going to be working those really long days because you're wearing a lot of hats. Don't forget, you're doing the marketing, merchandising, operations, physically doing the service yourself, administrative duties plus more. So even if you're not in the field itself for the full time, you're gonna have to be doing, working on the business stuff. So just know that there's a lot going on and you're gonna be working a lot of hours, especially because so many of you are not gonna have people that work for you in those early days of your business. So if you think you can do this in five to six hours a day, Eh, some of you might be able to do that depending upon the type of business that you have. But for most of you, that's not going to happen unless you have a part-time business. So just know that you're going to work a lot of hours. Uh, Question number 11 actually ties into those employees. Are you going to need to hire employees? Really, depending upon the type of small business you open, uh, you might need some employees. For example, if you do a quick service restaurant, hair salon, dentist, stuff like that. But for most of you, you're going to fall into the category. You will not need employees. You may want employees, but you don't need employees. Uh, I will tell you that hiring employees is a critical step in any business. And it's one you should not take lightly because these employees are going to take a big chunk of the profits of the business. And for most people, you just don't need them in those early stages. And you need to make sure that you hire the right people, which is huge. And you don't need to go out there and hiring people if you don't even know what their costs are, if, if how you can use them, how you can leverage them. Whatever you do, do not hire any employees until your new business can support them. You need to have a solid business plan and sales in order to pay for them. So even if you are opening up one of those brick and mortar type of businesses, you need to make sure that you've ran the numbers and to make sure that the profits of the business are going to be able to be there even if you pay employees to do what it is that you need them to do. You need to think of your employees as investments, not just as an expense, because you need each of those employees to create even more cash flow, more cash, more profits for the business. So it's important that you really understand the employee side of it This episode is not the one to get that. We'll have some episodes on in people later on. All right, number 12, we're hitting the home stretch here. Are you prepared to create a business plan? Listen, you've been doing your research. You've been looking into all this stuff. You've been answering these questions. You're like, hey, yeah, you know what? This is really starting to look like the right thing for me. Uh, You need to be able to create a business plan. You need to be able to sit down and put it together. Listen, I know that you're gonna kick ass and you love people and you just wanna dive right in. Well, you need to slow down, Turbo. Just because you've done the research doesn't mean you're quite ready yet. You need to have a business plan, or as I like to call it, a success blueprint. Later, we'll talk more about what's the difference between an actual 
business plan? And do you need one of those or something like I call a blueprint? Because most of you don't need an actual business plan per se, but you need what the business plan is accomplishing for your particular business because it's going to be a little guideline for you that lets you know that you're going in the right direction and that you're following the goals and dreams that you set in place for your business. Because I'm telling you, once you're knee deep into the muck, you're going to forget about some of those things that you wanted to accomplish and do. And your business plan is going to be there to help you out because it makes a fantastic reminder of where you're going and how you plan to get there. And plus, you're going to tweak it as you go, but it's just a really great place to put it. Now, question number 13 is probably one of the most important questions that you're going to ask yourself before you even start your new business. It's so important. It really is two questions in one. A business can only survive if it is profitable. Remember, this is a profit game, not a sales game. All the sales in the world do not mean anything if you do not keep any of the money. It is critical that you remember that you're trying to run a profitable business, not just one that does a lot of sales. Even if you hate math, there is no way to get around being a numbers person. The numbers in your business are a guide to what you are doing well and how much money you're making. Remember, money flows into your business and money flows out of your business. The goal is to keep as much as you can and not let it all flow out. You need to be able to learn about profit and loss statements, budget, sales plans, cash flow, margin, balance sheets, a host of other items that you're going to hear about in the business world. Now, you don't need to learn everything. Sometimes it can be overwhelming when you go online and you start looking at what's out there. My main mission is to teach you the core things that you need to know from the beginning and you can continue to grow your business knowledge. But the main thing is from day one, it's very important that you want to know your business numbers. And throughout the podcast, we're going to talk about those business numbers. We're going to weave them in and we're going to talk about different things that you need to do. Plus over on the main podcast, Badass Business Owners, we talk about your numbers all of the time and how it relates to your business and running a better business. And over on the YouTube channel for Badass Small Business Owners, I do tutorials and teach you more about your business numbers. So you want to make sure that you stay in touch and you continue to learn more. My goal is to help you learn and interpret the story the numbers are trying to tell you. They're not just not numbers on a page. They're trying to tell you a story. Your goal is how do you learn to read the story that it's trying to tell you. So don't forget to check out those two. Plus I have a Know Your Business Numbers course that will come later on. So how did you do? Did you realize you still have a few questions that you need to get answered? Or maybe you're already starting to get the business in motion and now you just need to step back on a couple of these items and brush up. Whatever you are, the main thing is that you answer these questions and say, hmm, okay, I got it. No matter where you are in the planning stages or execution of your business, I'm here to help you navigate those waters. With over 30 years of leadership, business knowledge, merchandising, operations, training, development, human resources, trust me, I promise you, you're in good hands. My brain is here for the picking. So if you did great on the questions and you're still interested in starting a new business, let's keep moving forward and see what's going on. It's going to be a hell of a ride, but it's going to be worth it. The main thing is we just need to do it correctly. You're going to make mistakes. It's okay. It's how you deal with those mistakes and what you learn from those mistakes that will determine your success. Now, even though we hit these questions up, I do want to take the next episode and I want to talk about some of the downside of running a small business because it's important that you go into this with your eyes wide open. So make sure you check out that next episode. And don't forget, in the show notes is a startup guide to help get you going. Now let's head on over to the next episode.